Hey guys, Crazy Tech Lab here, and today if you're a PC enthusiast and you've been looking at the internet at all, you may well have noticed that Intel has launched its next generation processors. Uh, codename KB Lake, we've got the 7700K, which is the high end part, which is hyper threaded, so you've got eight threads instead of four, despite the fact it's a quad core. Uh, you've also got the 7600K, which is the place, replacement for the 6600K, which is a pure quad core part. And in a somewhat surprise announcement, you've got the Core i3-7350K as well. So these are all unlocked parts, and uh, so you can overclock them you can, uh, using the multiplier, which is really easy to do to get extra performance. And of course, with a new chipset as well, the Intel Z270 chipset or Z270 chipset, depending on which side of the pond you come from, uh, you obviously always get a raft of new motherboards as well. So today, I'm looking at uh, one of my favourites that I've seen so far. Uh, I've got a whole bunch of them here with me at the moment that I'll be doing lots of more unboxing videos with, so stay tuned and uh, subscribe to my channel if you want as well. It is the Z270 X Power Gaming Titanium. So, as you can see, the board has got the titanium finish that we've also seen on MSI's Titanium X99 and uh, Z170 finish, uh, Z170 boards. So, here it's difficult to show in the photos, but it's kind of a a light graphite grey but there's like a definite metallic finish to the PCB. In short it looks absolutely gorgeous. Uh, it's an ATX board of course. There's a whole load of features on this board. Um, it's absolutely bulging with gear. So I'll just have a quick run through so you can see uh, what you'll be getting for your money. So for the most part this is going to retail for around £250. I'm guessing that's going to be over $300. Um, it's a super premium Z270 board, so there will be boards that are a lot cheaper than this. But it depends on what on what system you're looking at. If you're interested in overclocking and benchmarking and things, then this is going to be one of the boards you want to have on your shortlist. So the most obvious thing here is probably this uh, this thing on the side. We've got a, um, a like a PCB OC dashboard here. So as you can see in the photos, you've got a whole lot of buttons that you can adjust base clocks with, uh, you can power on the board from here, do a whole load of other things. Uh, that's detachable as well, so if you don't want it, it does come off. Um, I did do this earlier, it seems to got a bit stuck. Um, yeah, not gonna risk that at the moment, maybe it's screwed on, I can't remember. So uh, yeah, that, I'm pretty sure it does. It, it is removable, um, but you know, you can mount it to most motherboards and you won't have any problem with that because it only comes out about a centimeter or so from the PCB. But you've got voltage readout points here as well and um, a slow mode if you're into liquid nitrogen overclocking. Maybe you are, maybe you are. And uh, there's a whole load of other things too. You've got the uh, OC Genie button here, which is for MSI's overclocking. Other power on and reset buttons down here as well. You've also got a, um, a LCD display for the uh, the postcode display, which, which can help with error checking and those kind of things. You've also got a PCI Express slot toggle here so you can turn off slots which again is more of an overclocking um, benchmarking feature. So what else have we got? You'll notice that we've got the um, standard 6 SATA 6 gigabit per second ports here. You've also got a U.2 port and over here you've got an additional two SATA 6 gigabit per second ports but these are powered by an AS media controller not by the Intel one that powers the ports on the side. So there's a quite a big thing here about uh, M.2 with uh, uh, the Z270 chipset. So we've got a couple of extra lanes um, for PCI Express storage and um, obviously the motherboard manufacturers are making uh, a big deal of this this time. Um, Asus has got you know two M.2 board slots on most of its boards. Uh, this one's actually got three M.2 slots so you can actually have three M.2 SSDs on here at the same time. Um, so I've got a, a Samsung 1TB 960 Pro here, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, but MSI is including a, uh, what's called an M.2 shield. Um, now this actually works as a heatsink. Um, I'll just see if I can unscrew this here for you, so you can actually have a look. Just pops off like that, and as you can see, there's actually some thermal paste underneath, underneath there. Now I've done some testing with this, and it does make quite a big difference. I saw a 10 degree drop when I've loaded the SSD, you know, churning away in a benchmark. Um, a 10 degree drop in, in temperatures reported in the Samsung Magician software. So, and that did seem to offer a little bit of a speed boost as well. I'm not sure um, if the throttling starts straight away, um, but it did seem to make a bit of a difference compared, compared to a lot of the other boards that I've tested. So, 
Uh, basically, it slips, slips on there like that. I won't screw everything in because I'm kind of holding it with one hand and trying to show you with the other. Um, but the, uh, the heat sink basically just pops on like that. I need to mess that up. And there we go. So it, well, that's that's literally all you have to do. You just need to screw it into place, and the heat sink does get visible, uh, you know, noticeably warm uh, as you're as you're uh, using the SSD. Uh, it's not going to make a whole lot of difference if you're just running Windows, but if you you know you're if you regularly drop you know gigabytes of files through the SSD, then um, not only will it run cooler, which should help it last longer, um, and but it may well may very well help uh, reduce the uh, the throttling effect as well. I think Samsung quotes about 300 gigabytes uh, of throughput in sequential data before um, the SSD will start throttling with this new 900 series, so it could help with that. So what else have you got? You've got the uh, four. PCI Express uh, slots now. You only get um, that's the 16 times slots of course for your graphics cards. But again, you're only getting um, 16 uh, PCI Express lanes uh, on this board. There's no extra, um, you know, class controllers or anything like that offering more PCI Express lanes. The extra PCI Express lanes in Z170, uh, sorry, Z270, should I say, are for the storage only. So um, there's no way of divvying those out for extra graphics performance. Not that you really need it though. Uh, from most benchmarks that I've seen, even if you had two 1080s in here, uh, GCS 1080s, that still wouldn't really see much of a bottleneck if uh, just by dropping down to um, eight lanes from 16 per slot, like you would like you get on an X99 platform. So that's uh, that's nearly it as far as this board goes. Um, as I say, it's got the great looking PCB um, on the back. There's uh, there are plenty of ports. Uh, you've got the USB 3.1 Type A, uh, sorry Type A and Type C. Um, the onboard audio has risen from I think ALC uh, 1150 to ALC 2220, I believe, uh, which does offer more performance. I've uh, used, I've tested the, uh, the boards I've had so far in Rightmark Audio Analyzer, and you're getting a few extra decibels um, on the noise and uh, dynamic range. So. All in all, this is a fantastic motherboard, and I will also just run through the uh, accessories that you get with it. Oh, I should also notice that the um, you get the uh, chrome-plated uh, DIMM slots as well, um, alongside the uh, the PCIe slots. So we'll just put that over there for a second, and I'll uh, crack open the uh, accessories box. I'm not usually one for accessories, to be honest. Um, I like just you know getting a board in and powering it up. But you do get some uh, nice shiny um, SATA cables here as well. Um, and of course this board being an extreme overclocking board with voltage readouts, you've got some voltage readout pins here as well that you can put into the motherboard uh, for extreme overclocking. And uh, I'll just open up this bag here. And I should have actually looked at the manual before I looked at these, but I haven't anyway. This is actually a, uh, a USB um, hub, so you can, uh, it's got a Velcro pad as well, which is nice to see, so you can stick it anywhere in your case. And you've got a standard USB 2 header here, so that will plug onto there. Um, wrong way around, there we go. So that basically plugs onto there and you basically get a couple of extra USB headers which might be useful for a case or or something like that. So nice to have, although I guess you're, we're gonna end up paying more for it. And um, that is pretty much it as far as I can see. Oh, no, there's one other thing in the box. You've got some uh, RGB LED headers. Of course, a lot of the motherboards now offer um, RGB lighting. Um, there's not so much on the board, to be honest. In fact, I don't actually think there's any um, hanging around, um, any RGB LEDs on the, uh, the X-Power Titanium. Uh, what you do have uh, here is a, a Y-Splitter cable. So you've got the um, single RGB header uh, down here. A uh, four-pin header, and this will allow you to power two LED light strips off it. So all in all, um, it looks like a, a really good motherboard. You can have RGB lighting if you want to buy some LED strips. You've got a fantastic uh, finish on the PCB, but you're going to pay for it in the price tag. Okay, thanks a lot, and I'll be back with more Z170. Uh, sorry, Z270. Got to get it into my brain now. Z270 unboxings. Thanks a lot.